Hi there, I'm Amanda Cromhoed from Truth. Welcome to the Blind Loyalty Challenge. We interview world experts in loyalty blindly. We're hoping to create insight, spontaneity, and a lot of fun through the challenge. The challenge is about promoting the Blind Loyalty Trust and my book called Blind Loyalty, 101 Loyalty Concepts Radically Simplified. All profits from the book go towards the trust. We hope you enjoy the Blind Loyalty Challenge. So it's always an honor to meet new people and Gunjam and myself have been trying to meet for quite a while. So thanks to Bob Salmasi. We have Kunjam Kumar, the Chief Revenue Officer of Loyal, joining us on the Blind Loyalty Challenge. Welcome. Thank you very much, Amanda. I really, uh, truly feel that this is going to be exciting. Uh, also because, as you rightly said, we have been trying to be in touch and an and, and, and absolutely pleasure to actually meet you. So great. So I'm going to really make this easy for you. So the first question, Chapter 63 of Blind Loyalty talks about Web 3.0. So it couldn't get easier for you, I'm sure. <laughs> so tell us, is it just a craze or does it actually really make a difference to the customer and to the brand? Yeah, I'll tell you one thing. Uh, a lot of people talk a lot about Web3 and, and just rewind the entire world in, in the early 2000s when internet was still not the norm. Everybody had the same kind of feeling that no, 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 people don't need internet. You know, it is not something that would really change the world. But today, in this generation and age, can anybody even think of not having an internet? You know, yeah. And Web3 is exactly the same thing. Whether we like it or not, the world is moving towards Web3. And it is coming and it's coming at a very fast pace. And the, the, the biggest difference is today when you look at uh, the the entire components around the web too. It is all about centralized stuff. You talk about a database, it is centralized. You talk about information, it is centralized. The the advent of web three and blockchain makes it completely decentralized. So you really are not a single owner of the data. The data is there when when and it, and it needs to be available. And that makes the huge difference between what is web two versus web three. It is all about security, transparency, and, and making sure that, that the right level of information is available to people in the same ecosystem. I love it. I think you've probably simplified for everyone who's been wondering a little bit more about it. Um, that simple explanation is really powerful. Okay, so along the similar lines, what would you say has been the most exciting innovation in loyalty that you've seen in the last think... 12 months or so? I'll tell you one thing. Uh, innovation is not about only technology. I think it is how one is able to use the technology to fulfill a business or a commercial value. In terms of loyalty, it's predominantly engagement, stickiness, and also in terms of the technology, it is how easy one is able to utilize the technology. So when I say about innovation, my feeling is that I've seen a lot of new things happening in the world. Obviously, you, you talk about Starbucks uh, coming out with an NFT-based, I would say, loyalty program, but it is predominantly for the newer generation. But if you look at something that we are all looking to do is to ensure that people somehow are able to relate to a particular program on their daily spends, everyday actions. And, and more and more, I, I, I see uh, uh, payment link offers, card linking, account linking have started to now become the norm. Uh, we are just working with one of the leading um, airlines in the Star Alliance, and you would not believe that their engagement with their US and UK members was just 1.56 times a year. Just imagine 1.56 times a year. If you can move that to 1.56 times a day, that is innovation. So, and, and there, you do not need just technology. You need to really understand what is a member's lifestyle? What does they really want to do? And then play with that. The technology would only aid you to fulfill the direction, but without understanding what you would like to be, an innovation will just fail. 
You know what, you've, you've almost taken the words out of my mouth around innovations, not just about technology. I think a lot of people misunderstand that. And what you've said is just making the members' lives easier um, at the end of the day. Those small little changes that address the business strategy is what it's all about. Great. So let's finish off on the last question again. I don't think I'm anywhere near close to stumping you on this. So what's your personal best loyalty experience you've had? I would say there were many uh, loyalty experiences that I would like to talk about, but I was simply amazed. Uh, uh, one of my recent trips before COVID to China, and I was staying at uh, one of the Hilton uh, properties. You would not believe they had taken every, every inch of information that I had provided to them, right from knowing what kind of pillows I want to what kind of, of, uh, of, uh, uh, drinks I actually take to the kind of launch access that I want to do to make sure that my events and meetings are in place, even ensuring that they had placed a multi uh, a charger just in case I needed to have a spare one. You know? So that is the kind of loyalty that drives, uh, a, uh, I would say, incremental stickiness and repeat purchase. I haven't yeah. seen that kind of work been done by any other program ever. So that was really something that was fantastic. I, I even called up my wife and said, you know, that probably as much as you know me, these guys know me. <laughs> so you can imagine that, well, it, it was one way also very good, but on the other side, it also shows the power of data. That if you really understand the member and you analyze the data, then you can have the universe of one, which is basically me in, in this case. And they really, really made sure that they knew that and knew everything about me. Brilliant. Lovely. Yeah, but that's cool. It's not creepy. You know, that's the use of data in a really powerful way, not a creepy way. So beautiful example means more than a few points, right? It's a lot more powerful than that. Amazing. Exactly. Great. Well, you sailed through that. I think we might have to do it again in a few months and make it a bit harder. <laughs> Who would you like to tag for the blind loyalty challenge? I would definitely send in a note to my dear friend, Steve Arsenal. He's based in the U.S., and uh, I'm sure he would love to uh, be uh, on your uh, show next time around. Uh, he would love to do and, and telling me uh, uh, that he, he uh, is incredible. He has almost four decades of loyalty experience and, uh, and, and comes from both the aviation industry, working uh, uh, across the globe just as, uh, as, as I would do. And uh, he's phenomenal. You will, you will love to speak to him. Yeah, oh, amazing. Well, we can we can get four decades of experience down to seven minutes. Well, I look forward to that. Kunjan, thank you so much. It's such a pleasure to have you on the Blind Loyalty Challenge. Well done. Thank you very much, Abanda. Love it. Have a good day. <laughs>